Hello. Let's get back to work again. So before we proceed to the second session of this lecture, as we did last week, we are going to have a brief quiz. And for those of you who were not here last week, uh, if you have any device that can give you access to the internet, whether a PC, tablet, a, a smartphone, go to kaut.it. And when you are prompt for a game pin, that's the game pin, 47, 47, 58. And you can use a nickname or your name or because uh, the scores are not recorded in any way or they are not used uh, for evaluation. So it's, it's, it's just for recapitulation of what we learn from time to time. You have only 26 players. Anybody else is trying to? Uh, are you there? Did you use the pin 47, 47, 58? Your name is not there? You see it? Yeah, good. Anyone else trying to get in? Oh, yeah. Ready? And the rule of the game is the faster you respond, the more points you get. You have 30 seconds to answer. All of the answers were correct, so whichever you picked, you would be correct. You only needed to be faster. Next. Next.
all of the answers were correct, so you just needed to be faster to pick any one of them. That's it. And the winner is Natalie. Where is Natalie? I I'm sorry today, I don't have chocolate, but at least she deserves a round of applause. Wonderful. So, so we proceed with today's class and we were talking about search marketing where we saw the distinction between search engine optimization and search engine marketing. The third approach is social media marketing based on those three pillars we identified earlier where we looked at upon content marketing search marketing and now we we are going to look at social media marketing social media platforms have become extensively popular we are at least every one of us is a subscriber of one of the social networking sites and in, in particular social network sites such as facebook google plus twitter linkedin they have become very popular. And the popularity of social media platforms has changed in many ways the way we do business. However, there is more to social media than social networks because usually when you talk about social media marketing, one thing that pops up in people's minds would be Facebook, Twitter, and that's it. But there is a wide range of social media platforms that a business can utilize in order to grow their business, in order to attract traffic to your site, in order to pull consumers to your products. So there are six different types of social media presence that a business can take advantage of. The first one is social networking, and this is the most popular one that we are all aware of. But the, we also have social knowledge platforms, social news, social sharing, social streaming, company user generated content, and community. I will explain each one of these uh, in terms. Starting with the social networking. So these are the kind of platforms where consumers have the opportunity to interact between themselves and with the brands. So when we are on Facebook, not only that we are connected to our friends, families, and other people, but also we get connected to brands. For instance, when we like certain brands or on Facebook, or when we like a movie, a television show, or a product, all these are ways through which we get connected to companies. And companies are taking advantage of this. They have Facebook accounts. They are trying to attract as many followers as uh, they can. And through Facebook, they can interact. They can listen to their customers. They can get suggestions on how to improve their products. They can follow how consumers experience their, their products. And it has become powerful. And in fact, of all these social uh, networking sites, I have to admit that Facebook is the most popular. Nobody can deny that. I think at the moment they have about 1.4 billion uh, subscribers. 
around that figure. So it's the, the most popular, and many people believe that Facebook has revolutionized uh, business. Today, not only that we have brands that are, have accounts and they are trying to communicate their services and goods through, uh, through Facebook, but also people are doing business on Facebook. I, will show, uh, I could show you uh, a Facebook uh, page uh, when I was at, at Norwegian School of Economics. There was and is still active where it, it used to be shop or sag. It's a buy and sell uh, page where students could sell among each other. So whether you have uh, shoes that you don't like anymore or you are renting an apartment that is much bigger than what you need, you can announce it on, on that page and somebody that would like to stay with you can rent a room from you. Or you have books that you don't need anymore, you can announce there and people buy. It's a very vibrant uh, uh, community in a way. I, I don't know whether here there is such a thing going on, but it could be. It, yeah, there is one. But it's something very popular. So Facebook has in many ways transformed the way we do business, the way we get informed about uh, products, the way we talk to other people about the products we, we have uh, consumed, and the way we communicate to the companies. Uh, just today, before I came, I was uh, speaking to one of uh, my colleagues. Uh, he's uh, a PhD student, and he was traveling to Colombia, and it, it turned out that his luggage was ruined. So he tried to, he filled the forms uh, to the airline and he asked them for uh, if there was any way they could compensate and the people at the customer service said they couldn't fix it, you know. And he came back home. So he tried to call them. So a couple of times and they said they thought it was not possible to pay any compensation. What he did was he took a picture of the, all the stuff that were ruined and posted them on, on their Facebook page. And he wrote, this is what happens when you travel with this airline. Even two hours did not pass. The manager of that airline called him. And they say, we are very, very sorry, and we wouldn't like you to take this thing. We did not expect that you would take it so far. And in fact, we apologize for whatever happened, and we are ready to compensate. Please tell us your details. And in that way, he was compensated for all the, the destruction that he has suffered. So it goes to show that Facebook and uh, other social network si sites have changed in many ways the way we interact um, with companies. Did you guys see a video on YouTube that called United Breaks Guitars? You didn't see that? You want to see it? Anyway, you can watch it on your own, but I will just tell you the, the, the story. So what happened is this guy had traveled with United Airlines, and it turned out that he's a musician. His guitar was broken. He tried to uh, ask for compensation, just as my friend did, and they declined. It made a follow-up for nine months. Nothing. So he promised the lady that was handling our case that I will make three songs and publicize it on YouTube telling about what happened. So he made three songs, calling them United Breaks Guitars. And in the song, if you watch the video, he's describing the whole incident, that I was traveling with my guitar. It's a quite expensive guitar. And it's a, the brand is uh, Taylor. And United 
broke my guitar and they refused to, to compensate. This video became very popular and the guy after that became very popular. If you watch the video and there is a, the story is beneath the, the, the video. But all this goes to show you that social media in many ways has become very influential in the way we, we do business. So we, we saw social networking sites and uh, Facebook is uh, uh, a prominent example of that. And because of Facebook influence in transforming e-commerce, some people have coined it, all kind of transactions that are enabled through Facebook as F-commerce, that is Facebook commerce. If you search on the internet, you get a lot of information about search commerce, uh, Facebook commerce. But also we have other social media platforms that are primarily for sharing knowledge, such as Yahoo Answers. And these are a, a, another type of platforms that you can take advantage of when you are trying to grow your business. On this, for instance, Yahoo Answers platform, people ask different kind of questions. Some of them are not very important questions and others are really interesting questions. But as a person that is trying to grow your business, you can take advantage of this. For instance, this girl is asking, why does my chihuahua only bark at bigger dogs than, uh, than her on the street? And people are providing answers. But do you not notice what happened here? What is this? Yeah, so although the, the question looks very casual and people would provide a, a lot of answers, you know, for, uh, for instance, th this girl says uh, probably she, she doesn't recognize how small she is, you know. So, but here you have an advert. We are committed to making life better for pets, yours and ours. So by being on sites like this, when people are asking for questions, you can look for those questions that are relevant to your products and try to help uh, out people like giving them answers and implicitly suggest your products. So you, need, you also need to be on this kind of size. So it's, it's not just on Facebook or Twitter, but this kind of uh, platforms also provide opportunity for you to reach out to consumers and tell the story about your product. But of course, it has to look very natural. For instance, you, you don't just pop up for every question and right away introduce your product because people will really know that you, you are mostly motivated for, you know, you're profit oriented. But you have to look at very natural. Uh, you, you can provide explanation and explain how your products genuinely can provide solution to that problem. And then we have social news uh, sites. These are platforms that mostly for sharing news. And Twitter is perhaps the best example of that. So by being on such platforms, you can get your consumers and potential consumers to know about your products or developments in your, in your business or anything that is going on in, in your company. But it's one of the ways that you can reach out to your consumers and potential consumers. We also have social sharing sites. These are the platforms that provide holders links and stories on the internet. So on this kind of sites, they are actually collecting all the links that have interesting stories or interesting content together and they share it out. So by being on this kind of platforms, it helps you to know what is going on in the world, what is important, what is trendy. So Delicious is one of those sites. So what they say is, if you discover anything, please share it with us. They organize all the links and people can get to know in real time what is going on in the world. So if you have a business and you would like to develop it, you need to look for sites like this where interesting stories 
uh, collected and links are provided. So that helps you to stay updated because as we said earlier, that the business environment is very dynamic. Things are changing rapidly. You need to keep your eyes open to notice what is going on around you. So you need to be informed and this kind of platforms will provide you with a cutting edge source of information. So you have to stay alert and when you visit on these uh, kind of platforms, they will let you know what is the hottest in town. And then we have social streaming size. And the best example of this is YouTube, where people, you can share photos, videos, podcasts. And this has become extremely popular because it provides a means for you to raise awareness about your products. For instance, if you ma manage to create intriguing videos like those that go viral, you don't even need to pay for that because people will be sharing the video themselves, they like the WestJet video we saw, or the, the Volvo uh, advert with uh, Van Damme. People will just spread the word themselves. It will spread naturally. So if you have a business, and of course, people are doing that these days. You keep a YouTube account where you post videos, interesting videos, remember the characteristics of uh, uh, content. They apply to all forms of content. So interesting, fun, relevant, of course. And those helps you to take out the, the word, right? And then we have company user-generated content and community. So these are the type of platforms that are owned by companies. They are known as brand communities. So what happens is a company helps to create a platform where consumers and pro prospective consumers can interact with one another, uh, can interact with the company. So for instance, Apple support communities. Apple have, a, have communities for all their products. They have a community for iPad, an iPhone, Mac, iPod, you name it. And on this uh, community, people share experiences. They communicate to one another. They help out each other. So for instance, this guy is asking, I need an activation code for my iPad. But And there are so many uh, questions like this. Apple does not even need to intervene because the, in most cases, the problem that you experience today, probably somebody else experienced it last year. So you don't really need to talk to Apple. Someone else can uh, help you out. And it's amazing how generous people are. People are willing to share and this is what we will discuss in some lectures to come the, the sharing economy it has become very popular now that people are willing to share people are willing to uh, give others knowledge so take advantage of that create a platform where your consumers will interact with one another will interact with you but no not all brand communities are company owned some of communities are initiated by consumers themselves, especially when you have very vibrant uh, consumers that are so much passionate about your product. We talked about uh, brand building last uh, week. That's w one of the aspects. Wh wh when you, you build a powerful brand, you are likely to create those kind of consumers that are so passionate, that are so engaged to your brand. And that's what you want to do. And when that happens, some of them will even create their own community. This is an example of a community where the company itself is not involved, Tesla Motors Club. Uh, and if you look, if you have a keen eye, you will see my name there. I, I'm a member of this, car, uh, 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 this community. I, I don't have a Tesla, but maybe it's, it will come in the future. But I, I, I like the brand, and I'm part of this community. And the way, um, I, I'll tell you a story uh, how I became a member of this last year. I was involved in a project in, in the beginning of 2013. Tesla started to sell Model S in Norway in August 2013. And in a period of three, four months, by December, they had sold 1,500 pieces of cars in Norway. That made Norway the second largest market for Tesla. But something happened around January, of course, a little bit earlier before Christmas. 
as winter was kicking in, a lot of Tesla Model S owners in Norway experienced charging problems. And we had a project uh, to analyze how the charging problems of Model S in Norway affected other consumers in other countries. And we tried to think the cheapest way we could approach that problem was, let's go to the international brand community where you have Tesla consumers from everywhere across the world and analyze the text. How do people comment? Because this problem was so popular. You had it in all the leading newspapers in Norway, Dagens Nairing Leaves, uh, Afton Post, and Vege. So it was very popular. And some of them took the problem to the community. They shared it with other consumers that we are experiencing this problem and Tesla is not doing anything. So we did that analysis. It, it, it was a, a, a powerful report. Uh, I got a mail two weeks ago that uh, one of the professors was, uh, was asking to use that report for her class. It, it was amazing. So that's the moment I became a member because if you have to extract the text and analyze the content, you have to be part of that community. So that's how I became a member. Of course, I also like Tesla. But this is an example of consumer-initiated communities. That if you are able to build a strong brand, your consumers will become passionate about it, they will become engaged with it, and they can create their own uh, community. So here people share experiences, uh, uh, they help each other, and it's amazing. So we have talked about inbound marketing and the different approaches to inbound marketing. And the second opportunity I said earlier was mobile commerce. And this is what we are going to discuss now. So briefly, what mobile commerce is conducting electronic transaction through mobile devices. Mobile devices have become extremely popular these days. And different from desktop computers, mobile phones follow you wherever you go. They give you flexibility. As you can see, uh, wh when we do quizzes, we don't need to ask orally or distribute papers. Through your mobile de devices, you can access uh, a quiz. And this happens to goods and services, that mobile devices have become so powerful and companies are taking advantage of them. And this happens through mobile apps. And what is a mobile app? A mobile app is a software application that enables a mobile device to get things done. So there's a, an explosion of mobile apps. You, you're all aware of this because you use them every day. Look at those statistics that mobile apps now are created almost every day. And we have over probably 1.5 million because if you look at these uh, statistics, these are apps on Google Play, 1.3. These are apps on Apple, App Store, 1.2. And of course, some of the apps are on both, right? And then you have uh, Windows Phone, um, Amazon App Store, BlackBerry. And these are statistics are as of July last year. And we know people create apps every day. So perhaps we have much more than that. And this apps provide different functionalities. So they are education apps business, lifestyle, entertainment, utilities, productivity, photo and video, sports, navigation, travel, health and fitness, news, etc. You have different types, numerous types of apps. And of course, now we even are about to throw away our wallets. Why? Because smartphones will replace our wallets. In fact, will not. They are actually replacing our wallets. This is Apple Pay, which is currently used in the United States. And it, of course, soon they will roll out to the rest of the world. So businesses are going to take advantage of this. And of course, for those that are lucky to be using it now, they are already taking advantage of it. So why should we care about mobile Commerce. Why have I been telling you all these statistics, the functionalities of mobile apps? Why should we care? 
This is what Mary Maker, this is a technology analyst, said in 2008 that mobile will overtake fixed internet access by 2014. When the internet, when the World Wide Web, uh, web was uh, published in 1991, and all the uh, dot com bubble uh, com companies that erupted, we believe that was the big thing. But now mobile is taking over. And this was the prediction in 2008, and people ignored Some people ignored it. But what are we seeing today? This is a graph based on real data. Number of global use, users in millions between desktop and mobile. Over time, mobile popularity has increased. And at this point, it has actually passed desktop uh, computers. Of course, desktop is still increasing, but at a decreasing rate. Can somebody uh, recall the, the, what does this, uh, the shape of this graph tell you? Is there anything that we discussed earlier that looks like this graph? Does anyone remember? We talked about disruptive technologies last week. And I showed you a graph for popularity of digital cameras over time from 1975. And if, if you look at those graphs, the shape is more or less the same that in the beginning, disruptive technologies are not that popular. They actually have poorer performance than established technologies. But over time, they rise, and at a certain point, they surpass established technologies. And this is what is happening with mobile devices. So this is a research uh, from Global Web Index showing the usage of uh, smartphones. You have. Uh, 80% of internet users own a smartphone. And these are imaging devices. Smart television, smart watch, smart wristband. And they are coming up at the moment. So what does it tell you? As a business student, you are prepared either to own your own business or to work for an established business, which means one of your role will be to get products to the market. Of course, you could be working in other business functions, but if you are a business manager, you need to have an uh, understanding of all the bi uh, business fun functions in your organization. But more important, as we all know, the reason that business, businesses continue to survive is because they are able to sell. If you cannot sell your products, you cannot get revenue, and eventually your business will be wiped away. But where do you sell? You need to identify where your customers are. And today's customers are using mobile devices, which means you need to use these uh, technologies that uh, will enable you to get access of these customers. And this brings us to the digital marketing, which is a much broader concept than outbound marketing. So what digital marketing is? This is the management and execution of marketing using electronic media, such as the web, email, IPTV, and mobile media in conjunction with digital data about customers' characteristics and behavior. Put it simply, digital marketing is the application of digital technologies in execution of marketing. And what is marketing? Marketing is identifying customers' needs or sometimes creating customers' needs or even forecasting customers' needs and create a plan for fulfilling those, satisfying those needs. So when you use digital technologies to identify customer needs as we saw with uh, search engines, to forecast customer needs as we will see with uh, big data analysis, all this together comprise what we call digital marketing. So what are the main options for online media investment? You have uh, three main options, and all of these could intersect with one another. One is paid media, and this could be paid search, as we saw with uh, search e engine marketing. Uh, to, you display your ads uh, whenever um, relevant search words are used. But also, you could have earned 
media. And these are, in the past, we will use, say, influencers. For instance, when you use a celebrity to, to, to promote your, your, your products or your brand, that will be a form of media. But uh, today, we, you, you can use, say, uh, blogs or word of mouth, uh, people that uh, talk about your brand, people that share information about your brand, and that is a form of earned media. But, and the third option is own media, where you own a platform yourself. So you proactively create a platform such as a, a community or a blog or a website where you deliberately create an environment, an atmosphere for your consumers to interact with one another and for potential customers uh, to get to interact with your product or with other uh, consumers. And of course, as I said last week, when these sites or approaches are not clear cut, it doesn't mean that when you use owned media, then you cannot use end or paid media. In practice, companies will use a combination of this. So in most cases, most companies, especially those that are proactive with marketing, they will use all of this, depending on w which one you think is more important to you. So we, we will talk later when we discuss about big data analysis, where we, we look at how companies uh, analyze their marketing investments to make decision on which channels uh, to use. Digital and offline communications uh, techniques. So based on all these uh, uh, sites that uh, I have just uh, talked about, you can summarize them in these eight approaches or techniques that you, you, you can use uh, to reach your consumers. Uh, the first one is search marketing. We, we have uh, discussed this uh, earlier that what you are doing is to increase your visibility on the web because this market space is overcrowded. Everybody is trying to step in in the market space. So you want people notice your products. You want them to notice your site. And what you do is to do through search marketing, you can attract um, traffic, current customers as well as potential customers. And that could be through search engine optimization, that is the, the increasing your visibility uh, through natural search results, organic search results, but also you could pay for that. Uh, for instance, when uh, you pay Google to show your links or your ads, that's what we call paid search. But also you can use offline communications. Uh, we said earlier that the practice is to combine. At least this is what we are doing today. But uh, in the future, most likely traditional approaches will be phased out. Most of it will be these approaches. So you combine both uh, uh, print advertising, television, and uh, newspapers, billboards, whatever, the, the traditional uh, approaches to, to marketing. And also, you have interactive ads. So this could be ad uh, networks, sponsorships, like. Uh, because w when you sponsor, say, a certain uh, event, in a way you create association between yourself and that event. So it's not a mistake when, say, Nike uh, decide to sponsor Cristiano uh, Ronaldo, or uh, a, a certain bank decide to, 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 to sponsor a football league, a, a football club. Because in that way, you create association between yourself and that club. When people think about that club immediately, they can also think about your brand. And that is good for, first, for raising uh, awareness. We, we saw it, I said it last week that you, when you build a brand, you, you have to look at two things. You, first, you raise awareness about your brand. And second is you build image of your brand. You want to build a brand that has a positive image in their uh, in the uh, uh, in the society, it has unique that people can clearly distinguish it from uh, other brands and strong associations. 
And then you have uh, online uh, PR, and this could be taking advantage of uh, platforms like uh, uh, Facebook, uh, for instance, when, when people hashtag uh, your brand, when uh, your, your videos go viral. That, that's a form of online uh, uh, publicity. And then you have uh, online uh, partnership, and this could be uh, collaboration with, with other companies or other sites uh, where you can collaborate with uh, uh, blogs, uh, uh, for instance, uh, social network sites, uh, and other uh, uh, sites, uh, w websites, or other companies. And then you can also use offline communication, like direct uh, communication. And word of mouth that people can still uh, spread uh, words about your products or your services. But uh, as I said, this is here. Over time, all these forms of offline communication will eventually be phased out. The digital revolution has, uh, has just begun, and the impact will be even much more intense. For those of you who are interested to see, like to, to know where we are going, I can recommend you to watch uh, a, a channel by Professor Michio Kaku. Uh, he, he has just written a book about his prediction of the 100 years to, to come, how the technology will look like, uh, how we will develop starships, and how we can upload your uh, memory to like to get you back again to 30 years old, which literally means that people will not die. You will die physically, but uh, uh, scientists will be able to download your, your all your memory and upload it to someone else. And this means you will continue to live because you will feel that it's still you. Of course, you can notice that you are in a different body, but these are the kind of. Of course, some of these look very fictitious, but it seems there are a lot of things that will happen in the future that will completely change the way we, we do things. So it's 4 o'clock. That's it for today. I'll see you on Friday.